In today's Urbandum video, we head inside the historic, abandoned Paisley Royal Alexandra Hospital, located outside Glasgow in Scotland. The towering infirmary has been vacant for over a decade, allowing it to suffer from extreme decay and vandalism that places a cloud over its stunning, unique architecture. Join us as we explore the vast property to look for its special qualities. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. In our last episode, we asked the question, would you like to see more vehicle graveyards? We had many responses, and as shown by this comment from Joanne, bus, plane and car abandonments will feature more in the future on this channel. They definitely do show clear history with the different makes that change noticeably over time. This week we are asking for your opinions on graffiti in abandoned buildings. Do you think it's always mindless vandalism or can it be considered a creative output? Let us know in the comments to possibly feature in our next video. Covered in dominating vegetation, the grand entrance to the hospital showcases its obvious abandoned condition. The building has been shuttered since 2008 with metal sheeting on almost every window. Built just before the turn of the 20th century in 1896 by architect T.G. Abercrombie, it has been called his largest and most prestigious work in Paisley. Its dated design is now visible in comparison to the residential area it sits within. Around into its overgrown land, you can see some of the distinctive features that were the hospital's pride and joy, being three-storey ward blocks that ended with semicircle balconies topped by a domed roof. Amazingly also in this desolate region, you can sight another part of the former facility that is in use as flats, having been converted before the hospital closed. It felt strange walking to our inevitable access point and passing these inhabited sections that overlook the dilapidated building, once housing the same task. We had predicted that finding an entrance to the forgotten medical structure wouldn't be a challenge, and we were proven right, slipping into the complex's dark basement and immediately looking for a way upstairs. There's so much graffiti in here. It sucks because if there wasn't, imagine it was natural decay. The architecture is beautiful. It's up there with some of the best hospitals I've done. But it's just really trashed. The tiling behind the paint that's peeling off that is actually covered in graffiti, but yeah, you can see it a bit better. would have been such a nice building in its day. It's cool colours of paint chipping on the ceiling. This looks like a boardroom of some sort. Obviously, can't tell for sure because there is no furniture at all in this property. Look at these glass block windows. Wow, look at this banister. Okay, the architecture quite gets really nice here. You can just see it there on the ceiling of the coves. This is the central staircase for sure. 
with that stained glass window. And the ceiling as well. Oh, it's such a shame. It would have been such a nice place. Hopefully they can convert it with what remains, but it's gonna take a long time. It's as if all the colour was drained out of it. It appeared that one of many fires had taken place inside the central staircase, charring the walls and ceiling of an otherwise stunning feature. The hospital contained such a lack of furniture and so much human destruction that it was hard to find rooms of interest throughout a lot of it. However, along the main corridor there were many old features such as ornate wooden panelling and the ruined stained glass. Walk up this plank. This is a cool corridor. Can't tell if that's metal or wood. I'm thinking wood, but it's really dark. At the far end of the walkway is the connection to the flats that cover half of the former Royal Alexandra Hospital site. It was extended many times up until its closure in 1987, but wasn't left neglected for another 20 years. Imagine coming into a building and graffitiing woodwork like this. In the time the property halted serving medically, what hadn't been transformed into living spaces in the 90s became a care home, which is why there is a lack of hospital signage across the premises. The infirmary's nurses home became more flats in 2005, ultimately leading to the care home's closure a couple years later. This is a big room. Has to be a ward of some sort. There's one of these uh, over the three kind of blocks on each floor. So that's nine wards in total. These are like bedrooms. I guess I'd say nurses' accommodation, maybe patient rooms. Ooh, this is pretty cool. We can go outside onto one of the balconies. Yeah, this is nice. Some of that hospital architecture I'm hoping uh, this video will show. Kind of reminds me of like a tuberculosis sanatorium of old. Where they just focused on curves because they thought diseases would fester in corners. The curved open verandas at the south peak of each ward pavilion were among the nicest remaining details in the entire infirmary. You can imagine patients stepping out onto the protected balcony to get some fresh air after a long time inside the hospital. Sadly there isn't a great ordeal to see in the building, but this is one of those ruined places we are starting to find more interest in as we continue to lose old architecture every day. It's an old sign. Been looking for them, but I've not really found many. It's one of the first. Oh wow! Oh my god! This reminds me of something in Italy. This has to be like a kitchen. Yeah, I think it is. This looks like a um, one of those old whisk machines that they have in kitchens. I've seen a few of them in asylums. 
This incredible hall would have been a kitchen for the whole hospital, positioned on the top floor in a tower layout. Its prominent design was captivating, making us wonder of the causes that could lead to something like this becoming disused. The likely reason for the infirmary's decline was that the building, although beautiful, was outdated. Costs for such a large old structure would be sky high, especially with the addition of natural deterioration that happens to these places over the years. Unfortunately, they are never infinite, which is why the newer replications tend to be built with a favourable material for a longer last. We've been looking for the chapel for a while, and this is where we hadn't found it. The roof had collapsed. So we have to squeeze. Finally in. nice in here, it's a bit different to everything else with the stonework and the chandeliers are still intact. Although it boasted some dated parts, the chapel seemed more modern than the rest of the facility, explaining the lack of water damage internally, as there was probably a stable roof above. Moving back across the confusing layout of the hospital, we next headed for the lower floors that we had neglected since entry, mainly because there was no light being let in. What the glass block windows? Going down into the uh, underground basement now. It's creepy down here, I'm not gonna lie. There's less graffiti too, which is a bit weird. There yeah, the flooded tunnels. Classic in old school hospitals, probably would lead to each area. There's hardly any wall remaining down here. More kitchens were housed below ground level, but in a much smaller, less grand fashion. There was even some furniture like trolleys and cooking appliances. Like in most hospitals and asylums we have visited, a laundry room was situated down there too, with three massive industrial machines gathering dust. These are old washing machines and dryers. Oh, I didn't expect this dome ceiling. Looks to be some sort of entrance with these little reception booths. Pretty cool. Following our trip over the ground sections, we had successfully looked at the majority of the hospital and were ready to leave. In this video we attempted to showcase its highlights and left out a lot of empty destroyed rooms that were a common occurrence. Paisley's Royal Alexandra Hospital is still on the market currently, with no investors wanting to risk taking the plunge into a collapsing structure. It deserves to be saved in our eyes, showing rare medical design that needs to be treasured. Despite locals reporting constant crime to the council when scrappers have stolen expensive material and youths have trashed the interior, nothing effective has been done. Therefore it is almost imminent that a bigger disaster will occur in the future, either to the building or an unwanted visitor.
We hope you enjoyed our coverage of the hospital. If you did, leave a like on the video and subscribe to never miss a future upload. Here are some of our photographs captured at the vacant infirmary. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description where we post images of our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Remember to check out our new website and Discord server below. See you next time.